We're not a democracy. We're a theocracy. And this sister wouldn't shut up. She just would not shut up. She had her mouth on when I think you're an idiot. You're boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we do, honey. <laughs> oh, my. See how wise Jehovah is? It seems like every day there's a new whistleblower in Bethel. As if the governing body didn't have enough in their plate already. <laughs> now they have to deal with PMOs in their own headquarters, leaking all sorts of juicy stuff. Like this previously unseen Anthony Morris talk, given during Gilead classes. You know, Gilead, the six month premium indoctrination course, which trains missionaries that are sent all around the world. Yeah, this is the type of spiritual food they're receiving. So special thanks to Warwick Pimo, a new channel here on YouTube, for sharing this precious file with us. Pimo's at Warwick itself. I love it. Don't try to please men. You'll wind up pleasing no one. Please Jehovah and you'll please those who love Jehovah. And I'm going to repeat that. Because you can get back trying to please your branch committee or if you're a circuit overseer trying to please the district overseer, I'm not saying you shouldn't honor them, double honor is appropriate, but give me a break. It's not about pleasing men. No, you're going to wind up pleasing no one. These comments are so rich, coming from Anthony Morris III, who rambled against the use of tight pants and his personal opinions eventually became official watchtower doctrine. Did you forget about that, Uncle Tony? Is that not the definition of pleasing men? Please Jehovah, and that's what you live to do. You live to please Jehovah. Those that really love Jehovah, they're going to love you for trying to please Jehovah. That's, all, that's how it works, especially at your level of uh, spirituality. Here we go again, measuring spirituality by your title. This is definitely what Jesus would have wanted. Jehovah's given you so much, see. But for you to make that kind of progress, uh, you have to be able to take correction. This is not easy for most people. You know, it doesn't happen a lot, but enough to where I'm telling you it happens. Does it happen with Gilead graduates? Yeah. When we had the other missionary home arrangement, oh my word. <laughs> And Brother Hurd and I were like, you got to be kidding. And I understood the money thing way, way back, but Jehovah took care of that. And uh, Jeff Jackson came on service committee, and he'd been missionary in Spain. So I talked to him, had them investigate, some, asked them to investigate some things, because I coordinate service committee. And they were so willing, good men, beautiful men. Anyway, uh, you take, for example, Jeff said something about those homes. It's the only setup that was democratic in this organization. The way the missionary home functioned. No wonder we had problems. We're not a democracy. We're a theocracy. I love how Tony calling his organization a theocracy is a good thing to him. But I think it's very fitting because Watchtower fits snugly along other modern theocracies like Iran and Saudi Arabia. But unlike those theocracies, which at least enjoy some level of wealth, the subjects of the Watchtower theocracy are expected to be dirt poor. So there's theocracies, and there's theocracies. Yeah. So those that are in the field, you thank God. Now, there have been some good success stories. Not a lot of them. You put humans together like that. <laughs> it's these different heads, I tell you what. Doing zone visits, I said, this has got to change. One after the other needing an appointment. Hey, maybe being sent away to a foreign land and forced to roommate with people you may not even like is not going to create the most harmonious living spaces, especially when you're dirt poor and are falling sick with malaria every two months. Best life ever. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Apparently it wasn't in their Bibles. I don't know if they ripped the page out. <laughs> Somebody ripped it out of their Bible because they were not applying it. It was very, you know, so we try to love them and help them, but I, we supplicated over that, and that all ended. And it's pretty well over, and uh, it had its day, but Brother Glass, I heard him give a talk in 1971, and he was 
outstanding Gilead instructor. And I heard him in Florida say, you know, the number one problem we have in missionary homes is getting along with one another. Sounds miserable, to be honest. So I'm on service committee uh, years later. Number one problem we're having in the missionary homes is them getting along with one another. Nothing had changed. See. But their homes where there was an application of Bible principles functioned pretty good. But we, there were so many things wrong with it. They had people, you were way out in the field teaching, preaching, and you call them back for the meal because the family voted on when it's going to be. And then you got to leave your field. You know what I mean? Take a 45 minute or an hour bus trip. Have we lost our mind? Uh, to have, uh, and then, you know, some of the home overseers say any nation. <laughs> Alexander says, you better not, or I'm, I'm going I'm to tell somebody. <laughs> I'll report you. That's definitely the most sincere laugh we got in from Uncle Tony ever. I just love how relaxed he is. He's much more confident, much more unfiltered, and he's probably like five shots in as well. So make good use of the provisions while you're here at Bethel and the provisions you get for those that will be in the field. Uh, here you got morning worship, uh, practical direction. Uh, you know, let me just ask you this though. Now, other than the four commentators, what was the scripture text this morning? Who remembers it? Not the comment, the scripture, chapter, verse. Of course, the Bible verse has been immediately yes, yes. forgotten. <laughs> okay, so we're not trying to embarrass you, just isn't that interesting? Now, those that had comments, you probably remember John 6, 67, right? But do yourself a favor. Really observe the scripture every morning. I try to apply this all the time, even when I'm away, because God's always observing. Tony was referring to John 6, 67, which is what I call a thought-stopping verse. That is, a verse that allows Jehovah's Witness to avoid doubts. It's the gospel story where Jesus tells a large crowd to eat his body and drink his blood. The crowd is turned off by his comments and they stop following him. Jesus then asks his 12 disciples if they're going to leave him too, and Peter says, Oh Lord, to whom shall we go away to? You have sayings of everlasting life. Jehovah's Witnesses often quote this verse to say, Hey, the organization is not perfect. I may have doubts about it, but there's no better religion out there, so why should I leave? So I find it fascinating that Tony Morris often meditates on this verse. This implies that he often struggles with doubts about the organization. He knows Watchtower is deficient and incredibly flawed but he also believes that there's no better option out there, so he stays. And he must remind himself of this story in John to stop himself from addressing his doubts any further. And really burn that verse in, because it's about the scripture. The comments are great. You maybe heard a good comment, but meditate on it. And if you, you know, I found it you know, 10, like 20 times, I say that verse, think of the context, I own it. Very rare you're going to be able to come up to me and say, what was the scripture this morning? And I won't remember. Mm -mm. Master of humility. A friend of mine came with her to work in the service department for years. Fred Franz had just given a talk. I wanted to know about it. I knew he'd given it. Well, this Gilead couple are staying overnight with this couple because they invite us over. And my good friend that's there. So I started to ask him about... Brother Francis talk, and I love friend for Fred Francis talks, and he was deep. I wanted to hear what he had to say. And this sister wouldn't shut up. All about what she's learning at Gilead. She just would not shut up. I know she was excited, but it's like, excuse me? It wasn't my house, and the, the host is not saying anything. I said, uh, excuse me, I'm glad you joined Gilead. It's exciting, but... Could you let him finish? Because I asked him about Fred Francis talking. It's starting to get later. I do want to hear it before I leave. Do you mind? Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> So she didn't have her observation powers on. She had her mouth on. <laughs> See? By this point, I've heard dozens of hours of Anthony Morris footage, but this still shocked me. How could he say this out loud in a room full of women is beyond me. 
the governing body has a long history of demeaning women. Samuel Hurd has an iconic talk in which he claimed that women were not suited for the role of leadership because they have smaller brains. I'm not kidding you. Scientists say that the cranial capacity of a woman is 10% smaller than that of a man. So now this shows that she's just not equipped for the role of headship. Her role is one of subjection to the man. Her role is that of submissiveness, and that means that she should recognize that she is a woman and be glad to be a woman. You would recognize if you truly love your husband that you're not equipped mentally, emotionally, and physically or somatically for the role of competition. You would never pit your mind against it, not if you truly love your husband. What the fuck is this piece of shit? It seems that to be an anointed brother of Christ, you must also be a full-blown misogynist. So, I don't know whatever happened with that girl, but God help her, uh, somehow or another, she must have learned something some way. <laughs> it's sad. Toni Morris condescendingly calls her a girl, but we're probably talking about an older woman. I mean, old enough to be picked by Gilead. Toni is condescending even in the smallest of details. But... You know, for me personally, I think this is a gem, because in the schooling I had before being one of Jehovah's people, I could count on one hand the good teachers I had. Very few. They were all about rote, you know, memory, and they stunk. And I was so bored with most of them, and I'm like, give me a break, you know? And uh, not a pleasant student to have when I think you're an idiot. And I'm not saying I was appropriate, I was a worldly guy, and I didn't like being bored. And uh, one teacher says, you know, what's your problem? I says, you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> you're cruel, too. <laughs> uh, but with Jehovah God, oh, the education. See, so any of your instructors boring you here at school? I don't think so. Yeah, sorry, Tony, but the speakers you have at Bethel are still as boring as ever. I have to comb over like one hour of footage to salvage five minutes of semi-interesting material. That's how boring Watchtower speakers have become. Or maybe they've always been this boring, I don't know. But it's not a problem with you though, Uncle Tony. You're far more interesting. Please come back to Bethel. Please, please come back to the governing body. Sisters, and I've learned a lot from the sisters, by the way. The anointed sisters now in heaven, as well as our sisters in scripture. You can learn a lot from women. And don't forget, a large chunk of the resurrected anointed were women at one time. So I always tease the sisters, you're not going to be able to say, you don't understand. Because <laughs> those resurrected kings are going to say, oh, yes, we do, honey. <laughs> and you better do what you've just been told to do. <laughs> See how wise Jehovah is? Good news ladies, if you have a vagina, not even becoming an immortal spirit being in heaven will save you from following the orders of man. Welcome to the Watchtower Heaven. <laughs> uh, I told one Bethel sister, I won't, she, she's a tuxedo, and I was telling her about, you know, these sisters and all the authority, and she goes, yes, whoa, and I said, calm down. <laughs> You're not in heaven. You didn't get any authority yet, you know? <laughs> Except in the house. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know if this is comedy gold or just plain sick. Maybe it's a little bit of both. No, she's a real good girl. Oh, boy. <laughs> the zone work, the year before we had internationals, you don't do zone work then. So I'd never done. Well, anyway, Leon wanted to interview me at the special meal. And I said, nah, Leon. I said, you want to have a real great interview? Macumba. So get him up there. Man, he brought the house down, didn't he? <coughs> because he'd been the traveling work in, uh, what was it, Tanzania? And I mean, incredible story. What a face. Face full of life's experiences. Bethelites that were right there in front of him 
they were sleeping in their little hut and he stepped over them while they were sleeping to go out in the service. Now they're at Bethel. Incredible. See, you get around, and him and his wife, and I don't have time now because <laughs> we're done, but what he told Nor, you remember what he told Nor? Because he went to the 10 month Gilead without his wife. So he's getting his graduation diploma and he says to Nor, thank you, and I miss my wife. <laughs> And then he walked off, and Norm went, hmm. <laughs> All right, nice being with you, and we'll see you February 3rd. I miss my wife, but I'll have to wait till 5. <laughs> You mean to tell me these Gilead classes used to be 10 months long? That's more than a human baby! Well boys and girls, this is the divine wisdom that is given out at the top Watchtower University. Just imagine the amount of insane talks hidden in some archive somewhere in Bethel. I love these leaks because they give us an intimate look into the minds of the governing body in their full unfiltered glory. Warwick Pimo said he has a whole terabyte worth of stuff to leak, so holy cow, I can't wait to see what's in store. Maybe a Pillowgate 2.0? Who knows, my fingers are crossed. So let me know what you thought of this talk in the comments below guys, and please don't forget to subscribe for more Watchtower Madness coming real soon, and if you would like to gain early access to all my videos, please check me out on Patreon or become a channel member, it's only $1 a month and you help me keep uh, analyzing this propaganda for years to come. Yeah, I love doing this for you guys, but it does take a lot of time and energy, so all your support is fully appreciated. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. You're boring. <laughs> <laughs>